So I'm speaking with the composer Matthew Margeson, who has uh, quickly uh, risen through the ranks to demonstrate his versatility and abilities. Matthew took the path of working as an assistant, an additional arranger, and additional composer for composers like Jim Dooley, Brian Tyler, but most notably in his uh, working relationship with uh, composer Henry Jackman. Uh, Matthew has been on Henry's musical team for many projects now, which has led to an amazing co-composer collaboration on films like Kick-Ass 2, and now Kingsman, The Secret Service, uh, which sees the composing duo reunite with uh, Kick-Ass and X-Men First class director matthew vaughn uh matt thanks so much for uh for your time today my pleasure kai thanks for having me uh so to start uh i was wondering how did you discover uh music and kind of what led you on the path to composing what was that kind of pivotal moment where you're like okay i love music i want to pursue film co composition um oh that's bringing me back to <laughs> i guess um i you know i had always kind of taken um I'd always really been involved in music. I took piano lessons at a really early age. I think I started when I was probably like four or five years old. And um, when I was probably seven or eight, I grew up very close to New York City. And um, I guess when I was seven or eight, my folks took me to see my first Broadway show. And um, I couldn't have been less interested in the show on stage, but I was kind of more reacting to this kind of man wearing black, waving this funny stick around. <laughs> And so at intermission and after the show, I was like, well, let's go see what's happening under the stage because there's lots of people with instruments in their hands and they're making a pretty cool racket downstairs. So um, I think that's kind of when I knew, like, oh, I want to be involved in this someday. Right. And uh, it's funny because you, um, I saw your name in the end credits of uh, Into the Woods. So I think you were orchestrating for Stephen Sondheim on that project, weren't you? Yeah, that was literally a dream come true. I mean, <laughs> being involved in musical theater when I was younger, um, you know, to be invited to kind of go and help arrange some of the some of the orchestra, the underscore for that movie was just um, was just a real treat, and I, I was able to to work in New York for that, which was um, you know just a break from Los Angeles was nice, right. and to go back to the East Coast for a couple of months and to really dive into some of those original um, original manuscripts from Stephen and Company was was just a real treat. Wow. Um, so, kind of grow, uh, growing up and even now, what kind of music do you listen to that kind of influences your style and just kind of your overall uh, I guess, like of music? Um, uh, well, that's a very complicated question. I think, um, I think it depends on when you were to ask me the question, you know, I mean, um, throughout my youth, I was mostly listening to kind of top 40 pop music. And when I went to, um, I went to Berkeley college of music in Boston. And when I went to there, I was really immersed in both jazz and, um, classical, I'd say equally and studied composition there, but just played a lot of jazz in a couple different groups there. Um, and so, you know, now I think if you were to scan through a CD or record collection, you'd find everything from, you know, Miles Davis to Tower of Power to Tchaikovsky and Stravinsky. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit eclectic, you know. Mm -hmm. I just try to steal, steal what I like from everything. <laughs> Well, just, I guess, acting like a sponge. That's how we work, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you and Henry have been working together for for a few years now. Um, and so when did you first meet Henry, and how did that kind of collaboration click where you just, you know, he kind of kept you around on his team? Um, there was, um, we met, well, we, I bet we met probably in 2006, 2007, and um, at the time he was um, doing, I think his first, first full-length feature, which was a DreamWorks animation called Monsters vs. Aliens, right, and yeah. um, and he, you know, it's it's still one of my favorite tunes that's been written in, in the past decade. Um, I really love that score, and I think I was around probably in the middle of the night one night when, you know, there was a conform to a queue or a couple small fixes or tweaks, and Henry just needed to sleep because he had been up for 30 hours straight, <laughs> um, and I kind of, well, let me, let me, let me sit down for a couple hours, and and so we kind of had that that collaboration of me kind of helping him out, you know, when he needed it um, on the small things like that. And then, um, you know, it just kind of went from there and, and, and we work really well together in our, you know, our studios. We have the luxury of our, our writing studios being about 50 yards away from each other. So it's really easy for us to just, you know, have a smoke or grab a coffee outside or just, you know, bump heads in the hallway and, and bad ideas off each other constantly, you know. 
Right. And and you kind of you you took that path that which kind of Henry took that almost same path that you you took which is working as a additional composer and an arranger and I I spoke to a lot of guys who kind of took that path. Um would you agree that it's kind of the the best way for a composer to learn the business and build the skills they need? I mean, is that was that kind of the most you took out from doing all that stuff? Um yeah, well, calling it the best way um might not be completely accurate because there's you know so many brilliant composers that take different paths to do what we do mm-hmm. um but i think the pros of of doing it taking that path of kind of the apprenticeship route is um you know no matter how good you are at writing music um there's a whole there's all these other components to go that go along with doing what we do you know things like how to run a meeting and how to even you know like I said no matter how good you are at music is looking at a scene is some is a skill that you know you you need to develop as far as you know the pace of the scene and you know whose perspective you're playing so all that stuff I think you know why not learn from people that are doing it you right. know and and kind of you know you can make your decisions on what you agree with what they're doing what you don't agree with and what you like and what you don't like and you can kind of you know take all these bullet points from different people and and i've had the luxury for doing arrangements for um for a lot of you know a-list composers in town so i i feel really privileged to have been um, you know exposed to different ways of working and different ways of running meetings and different ways of talking to directors and producers and editors and kind of seeing what works and what doesn't work so kind of uh looking at now you looking at what you have starting on the Kingsman um it seems like this movie is a bit similar similar in style and tone to Kick-Ass which obviously it's you know Matthew Vaughn but just kind of kind of that over the top style as action so when you did have that first meeting with Matthew and you and Henry and so what, what were you guys talking about you know what was the goal musically that you guys wanted to accomplish what kind of conversations did you have and you know what did the movie really need um Interesting question. We, you know, when Henry and I first got involved in the project and we looked at the picture for the first time, um, I think we were, I don't know what the right word is, we were a bit, um, we had taken a little bit of an approach on it, which was, we had thought this was, maybe it was a chance to do, to, to, to be a very, very serious movie and a very dark movie and, and you know, very traditional score and um and the more we kind of came up with some themes and and it was kind of an unconscious turn that it took to you know and matthew obviously steered us in the direction of what we wanted which was of a matthew vaughn movie which is over the top and no matter how realistic you make it and how realistic the the action is and the violence is there's always a stylistic nature and there's always kind of a wink to his film and it's always so over the top that you're no matter what's happening on the screen, you're having fun and you're laughing with the film, you know? Right. And, but so, it, but um, it, it does have an emotional core to it because I mean, even with Kick-Ass, you know, you, you, it's ridiculous the amount of violence. You're almost laughing at how violent it is, but there are moments where you are like, you know, it's pretty emotional and very gripping. So was that, yeah, a, it, is that a challenge it, to find the tone kind of musically? Um, well, with this one, you know, we... we I, I think that I think that using we we had come up with the decision to use to make it a a fairly sonically traditional score from the outpost. So you know we were using orchestra. We weren't going to go down the road of using too many synths or kind of more ambient or textural elements. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I think right off the bat using a more of a traditional sound, you, you know, you can very easily make those moments serious if you need to. Um, and then, you know, I mean, we had put our heads together and come up with a couple different tunes that, you know, can be used um, to exhilarate you and can be, you know, reharmonized to perhaps make a moment a bit more serious or a bit more sad or somber. Um, but also, you know, you can play those moments on different instruments or in different keys or different ranges to, to, to kind of play with the emotion as you see fit for the scene. So, I mean, you know, you're working with Henry, who is, uh, you know, you're working in this collaborative state, and I've talked to a lot of composers who've co-composed, and they each have different ways of going about it, splitting up duties. Some people don't even talk to each other. I mean, how did you guys kind of uh, split the duties on this project? Um, chronologically, fr- from the beginning, we, you know, we took a look at the movie and kind of talked talked a lot about what we wanted the tone to be, and um, it, it actually wasn't the case where he went in one room and I went in the other, and we kind of you know, did our thing and, and, and met in the middle. It was, um, the, we, we, once we watched the film, 
we actually stepped away from picture for nearly nearly a month and the two of us just sat at a piano for days and kind of explored you know he had some ideas for tunes and i had some ideas for tunes and we kind of played them for each other and oh let's let's move that note here instead of here what happens if we go up here instead of down here and a lot of the times um you know we'd we'd get matthew vaughn who was in london at the time um on speakerphone and we'd just literally be playing stuff for him over the phone and kind of try to navigate through his reactions of you know he'd literally stop us and say i love that what's that keep that line in there so it was it was a real um it was a really healthy collaboration. You know, it wasn't necessarily where I was tackling one thing and he was tackling the other. We, we definitely, you know, it was like almost dueling pianos. We were both sitting there kind of playing things to each other and playing things together and you take the right hand and I'll take the left hand. And, and meanwhile, just recording all of these meetings so that way, you know, after we had kind of our toolkit of ideas, then we could kind of go and, and, uh, and delve into the, the, the color of things and, you know, orchestrating some things out. Um, so it was. It, it definitely was a really healthy collaboration. Well, that's awesome. I love hearing that because I, I yeah. think that's the, you know, coll- collaboration. I think is the best way to go about anything in film, especially music. But um, you know, and a lot of people who are in the business, you know, even if you work with somebody for so many years, I mean, there's bound to be points where you disagree or you kind of butt heads and you go, I think we should go this way. We go this way. I mean, does that ever happen with you and Henry? And if so, how do you kind of compromise and when do you kind of get that creative, maybe? little butting of heads um yeah you know i wouldn't necessarily say butting of heads might be henry and i you know first and foremost are 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 are, you know quote unquote drinking buddies we're really Mm -hmm. really good friends and and so i think when those disagreements come we each try to voice our case and you know i don't there's never really in in our tenure together been a case where there's any kind of grudges being held or like oh it should have been this way because it could have been a bit could have been better you know we we kind of make our case and usually we'll either meet in the middle or, you know, I'll say, oh, you know what, you're absolutely right. And there are times when Henry will go, oh, no, 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 I stand corrected. You know, let's let's keep that, you know, oboe in there or whatever the case may be. Um, so, so yeah, we, we, we kind of come together. And, you know, I think, I think bottom line, too, is that, um, you know, what we're doing is it's such a subjective art that, right, yeah. you know, there really is no right or wrong answer for the most part, you know, so. So what happens when... Uh, it's completely different if the director comes in and says, I don't like it, I want it this way. I mean, I think, you know, he's more of the, the boss in this situation. Do you, do you feel more comfortable speaking to, to Matthew Vaughn and going, I think this is the correct way to go, or is it really kind of his way and you try to kind of service his vision in, in the film? Yeah, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. He, he is the absolute boss. Um, right. you can, and, and there, were certain, there were certain moments where you do disagree with him, and there are certain moments when you can sell him on an idea and there are certain moments when he basically says no trust me it needs to be this way and you you do have to kind of bottom line trust your director um so i think you know i think there are there are certain times when we try to stand our ground um and there are certain times when we we won and certain times when we didn't so it's it there's no one one answer to that question you know right <laughs> so i mean i mean looking at the film and and the, the fact that it's kind of this uh, stylized action film so i'm assuming that in a movie like this same as with kind of kick-ass and kick-ass 2 is the sound mm-hmm. mix is going to be more saturated with whooshes and punches and glass and bullets i mean is it a challenge to work around sound effects of an action movie like this finding a way for the music to kind of i guess have a platform to sit on um, I'd say in most cases, yes. And if you're lucky enough to get in on the um, the production process and actually work with the sound people, then that can actually be a luxury. Um, I think that it's a you know one of the real privileges of working with Matthew Vaughn is that he loves music. So um, you know they, they they dubbed the final film in um, in the UK, and I, I was back here uh, in the United States working on a different project at this time. So you know I was getting these phone calls saying like uh, you know me calling the music team that was over in London saying, you know, how's the music? Are we, can you hear it? Is it, is it, and, and the answer was always like, oh, the music is standing proud and, and loud. So there's, I never have any concern on a Matthew Vaughn film that the, that the music's going to take second seat. You know, he's, <laughs> That's good. he's such a love of, of music that it's always kind of just a little bit, a little bit uh, more, more present than, uh, than it should be in a good way. <laughs> So in in a film on on the Kingsman, um, when you're kind of looking at it, whether you're spotting it, uh, 
uh, before you even wrote the first note, what took priority and kind of influenced your music the most over anything else? Was What really popped out first? Was it the characters, the plot, the action, the editing? What really was like, okay, this is speaking to me right now, and this is, I know where to kind of start building the score? Um, I think that when you watch the movie from start to finish, um, the whole, the characters, as well as the story, as well as the music, goes on a little bit of a journey. Um, so we needed to kind of tackle how we were going to do that. The first half of the of the movie, I'd say Acts 1 and most of Act 2, um, it, it is a really elegant pic, uh, picture where, you know, we have this whole kind of love letter to the British espionage um, idea working for us. So, you know, we're learning how to kind of pour our martinis and dress properly and learning the cool weapons that they have. And so the music retains a very, um, a very like, British elegance to it. And we needed to be very disciplined about keeping that. And then towards the end of the movie, when our baddie, um, uh, Valentine, you know, unveils his plot to, well, I'm not going to give away too much of the story, <laughs> but, um, you know, basically both plot wise and musically kind of carnage is unleashed and anything is possible. So to be able to kind of restrain ourselves for the first bit of the, of the music and stick to very traditional orchestrations and harmonies and, and towards the end, it's like, you know, you're like, are we still watching the same exact movie? How did we get here? This is unreal, you know? Right. I think, I think, I think to be able to, to look at the movie as a whole was a big concern of ours and, and, and you know, retain taking us on that journey. So did, did Henry have to kind of school you on British culture? and kind of... <laughs> Yeah, exa- exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but to, to, to wrap I up... I learned how to make a proper tea on this one. <laughs> well, that's good. You don't want to serve a, a British man on proper tea. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but to, to wrap up, I always like to ask composers this question, kind of unrelated to anything, but um, uh, if you could score any film ever made, pretending the original score never existed, uh, which film would you choose? Very interesting. Um, you know, having worked on um, having worked on Into the Woods this year, I would say um, I would love to go in and get involved in either a musical from the past or a musical from the, you know, that's, that would be made someday. I, I had a really, a really great time working with, um, the songs and with the underscore of, of being a part of a musical and that collaborative process. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it'd be really cool to, to dive into the musical world. That's yeah. I don't think any composer has ever said that, which is fascinating because I, I love, like, I mean, whether it be a Disney animation or, or you know, a live action musical, I think it's, uh, always results in amazing, I think, music collaborations with songwriting and score. So, absolutely, and bringing something from the stage to the screen is not is is definitely not a uh, a very easy task. So, you know, the challenge would be worth it. Um, what what would you say is your favorite musical? My favorite musical. Um, oh, I don't. I. I, well, I <laughs> geez, that's such a tough question. I mean, you have. You have kind of the Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff of the '80s and the Rodgers and Hammerstein stuff before that. Um, I don't know if I could put put one um, one musical in the forefront, really. <laughs> well, you know, maybe maybe enough. Fiddler on the Roof or a classic like that. You know, right? I actually it's recently a, a uh, I got to sit down with Richard Sherman, and that was an absolute. I mean, amazing oh. just to talk to him about all the stuff he's worked on. It's it's. Amazing, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, but uh, Matt, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you so much for speaking. It's been such a great uh, uh, learning experience too for me. So thank you. My pleasure, Kai. Good to talk to you.